¿Qué pasa, primos? <laughs> Just kidding, this video is going to be in English. Today I want to show you how to turn this worthless pile of lumber into an awesome little kitchen buffet with cabinet storage. Check it out! <laughs> Before we get started, let's take a quick look at the materials you're going to need to build this project. You're probably going to spend right around $100. I'm going to start with the 2x4s. I'm going to cut four of these to three foot long. I'm going to start my leg design by measuring four inches down on one of the long sides of the 2x4. On the opposite side of the board and just catty corner to that, I'm measuring down two inches and I'm using a spray can to draw a curved line. Then I simply use a straight edge to connect those two lines. Now it's time to cut my leg out. Once your first leg's cut out, you can use it as a template for the other three. Then simply cut those boards out the same exact way. I recommend doing a little bit of sanding right now. Now's the easiest time to sand these while they're on the ground and not attach to the table. Here's what my completed legs looked like. Let's start cutting out the bracing that's going to hold this thing together. Now I'm going to take my 1x3s and cut two 19 inches long and two that are 20 inches. Here I'm taking all four of these boards and I'm drilling two pocket holes on three of the four sides. Start with your 20 inch boards. You're gonna join these with wood glue and pocket screws to the legs. As you can see, I laid a couple one by threes down. That way the bracing sits back three quarters of an inch from the legs. I'm gonna use the other 20 inch boards and do the back legs the same exact way. Once that's complete, I'll take the 19 inch boards and join those to the sides. As you can tell here, I'm also setting these three quarters of an inch away from the edge. And there you have it. You're more than welcome to stop right here. I recommend we keep going though. Next, I'll take an eight foot one by 12 and I'll cut two boards that are 28 inches. Put a couple pocket holes in there. That way you can join these two boards together. There's no need to clamp down this tabletop. That's because I'm attaching the base right away with pocket screws and wood glue. You can't see it here, but the back edge of the tabletop is flush with the edge of the two by four legs. Now's a really good time to sand down the top of your table. Let's start working on the cabinet portion. I'm going to cut the 6 foot 1 by 12 right in half. Hopefully this gives you two 3 foot boards. Now cut three that are 25 and a half inches long. I'm going to trim a half inch off the side of one of those. Next I'm nailing the 25 and a half inch board flush with the top of the 3 foot board. Make sure these are square when you put them in. Now I'm taking the other 25 and a half inch board and joining it just below the 16 and a half inch mark from the top of the 3 foot boards. Now I'm taking that trimmed 1x12 and I'm joining it just below the 9 inch mark on those 3 foot boards. Carefully put a couple pocket holes in the bottom of those 3 foot pieces. Now I'm going to cut two 1x2s that are 3 feet long, two that are 2 feet long, and one that's 15 inches long. Put two pocket holes on each side of the 15 inch board and put one pocket hole on each side of the 24 inch boards. We'll join the first 24 inch board flush with the top of the three foot board. Then the other one will be 16 and a half inches down from the top of the three foot pieces. Then join the 15 inch board right in the middle. Here I'm using a little bit of wood glue and a nail gun to attach this face to the cabinets. Now's a good time to fill in some nail holes. Let's attach this thing to the base. This cabinet will sit flush with the back of the table. It'll also sit a half inch from each side. I don't want to be able to see these pocket screws I used, so I used a plug specifically made to cover up those pocket holes. I came back later and sanded it down. Now it's time to make the cabinet doors. Use the last of the 1x12s to cut two 15 inch boards. One of my doors didn't quite fit, so I had to trim a little bit off of one side. You might not have to do this to yours. Here I have a leftover 2x10 from another project. I'm cutting eight pieces that are a quarter inch thick. You'll need four that are eight and a quarter inches long and four that are 15 inches long. 
You could also make these with the 2x4s left over. I recommend using a table saw for such small pieces though. Now that I've cut the strips out, I cut 4 to 8 and a quarter inches and 4 to 15 inches. Here I'm using wood glue and a small nail gun to attach the 15 inch boards to the sides. The 8 and a quarter inch boards should fit right in the middle on the top and bottoms. If they don't, I just trim them a little bit before I attach them. Now's a good time to hit these with a little bit of sandpaper. I'm going to go ahead and install my cabinet knobs. I'm also going to go ahead and install the hinges. I want to make sure my doors fit well before I stain and varnish. I am going to take these right back off. I'm just making sure they don't need to be trimmed before I stain and varnish. It's time to put the last couple pieces on. With my leftover 1x2s, I'm cutting two pieces that are 19 inches long. Put one pocket hole on each of the sides of the 1x2s. Here I'm attaching these 1x2s 16 inches down from the tabletop. These are just going to give the table a little bit more stability. Now I'm taking my leftover 1x3s and I'm cutting two boards that are 25 and a half inches long. I'm just snapping these to the back. These will keep anything from falling out of the cabinets later on. Now's the time to do any leftover finishing before we start staining. Here's a picture of those pocket holes from earlier. With a little bit of sanding you can barely even see them. The stain color you see me using here is called Espresso. I really like a dark color stain. Next I'm going to paint the tabletop white. You know me though, I can't just leave it that way. Let's scuff it up a little bit. Now I'm putting on a coat of polyurethane. If you like the way this tabletop turned out, I'll try to get another video up in the next few days. There's just a little bit more to it than what I'm showing you here. Here I'm reinstalling my door hardware. In addition to the knobs and hinges, I'm also installing the catches. These will keep the doors from opening when I don't want them to. Let's throw these doors on one last time. Here I am installing the back portions of the catches. Make sure your doors are flush with the cabinet face when you do this. Everything seems to be in working order here. Our buffet with cabinet storage is finally complete. I really hope you enjoyed watching this build. Let's have some more fun. I've got his head there. Yeah, well, I don't have his head close. Yeah, be careful. He got his head down good enough. He's going to get you. Easy. Watch, he's trying to bite you there. Watch out, Jake. Watch out, Jake. Okay, turn around for the camera here. <laughs> oh yeah, it stinks. It's a watermark. Stinks. That's a good thing. <laughs> now you gonna cut his head off? Oh, I got your jaw. Cut his head off with the little jaw.